Let's talk about alternate sites. Now, when it comes to cloud computing, we generally need to realize that we may have disaster recovery and business continuity sites available. For example, if you're a financial customer in New York, you may very well have, a rare case seems less and less, but you may very well have a data center in Manhattan, for example. But that, of course, is really your primary data center, only to make sure that you could you know, make a trade as quickly as possible close to the stock exchange. However, you certainly don't want to have uh, an additional data center in Manhattan. What you do is you typically would have an alternate site in New Jersey or an alternate site somewhere up in Connecticut. And then you may also have an additional site, for example, that uh, will replicate every day or every hour, whatever that is, perhaps to another cloud region a little bit farther away. Now, again, it's all about understanding your requirements. So you may have your on-prem data replicated, let's say, from Manhattan to New Jersey, but you may have a, a, a third replication to a cloud provider. Again, there's many different scenarios here you could think of. But the main thing for the exam that I really want to make sure you understand is to know that there's three types of DR and BC sites. The first is a hot site, the second is a warm site, and the third is a cold site. Let's talk about these. So what is a hot site? Well, a hot site is really a mirror of your existing data center. In other words, everything's fully available just like your production data center. This is very common to have the hot site of course, within typically 20 to 30 miles, generally depending on your link quality and application response requirements, it's really hard to get above that, even though, for example, like if you wanted to replicate um, to uh, another EMC array, Hitachi array, a lot of those uh, software may be able to support uh, and, and, of course, depending on your link, may support up to 60 kilometers sometimes or somewhere around there. But as a best practice, practice, excuse me, we generally want to make sure that our hot sites are about as close as we can get them, but also as far away as we can get away with from a uh, disaster recovery perspective. For example, if something happens in Manhattan, what do you do? You go to New Jersey, right? Or vice versa. It really just understands. And, and again, if you're in California or if you're in India or Australia, New Zealand, wherever you are, you need to figure out your geography. Uh, look at a lot of scenarios such as power grids, such as weather patterns, are you on a river, whatever you need to look at to be safe. Like in, in D.C., I did a lot of work in D.C. and uh, sold tens of millions of dollars worth of IT infrastructure around data storage. And I can tell you there's one challenge that we'd run into was we had a river called the Potomac River. Well, that, again, could flood and routinely flood areas such as Alexandria and also parts of D.C. Uh, as well. So these are things you need to look at. Now, a warm site is a little different. This is where we're going to have resources available We'll have our telecom typically ready, but we're not going to have a full production environment running. Now, if we're replicating to the cloud, this is typically what we may want to consider uh, in the sense that we're replicating on-prem to a cloud provider that may be in a different region or zone than maybe our production site. And the cold site is, of course, the least expensive. Now, I didn't mention, of course, a hot site is going to be the most expensive uh, to maintain, and a cold site is the least expensive. So for the exam, we just want to know these three types of sites and know from a cost perspective and a maintenance perspective what takes the most work, of course, and then know the difference between the sites. So what is a cold site? This is basically a building that is pretty much available to place stuff in, but really hasn't uh, been sort of set up. There's really no networking. It's more of a storage facility than anything is the way that I would consider this. There's really no work in IT. 
and it's going to take you some time to get set up. But it's here just in case there's a big disaster and we need to just start moving in somewhere else because our primary site uh, and probably secondary, generally if you're in an enterprise, a cold site is going to be a tertiary site, typically a third site just in case. You don't really want to have a DR plan based on a cold site. You're going to want to have a hot site. Now, a test tip around here, we need to know the difference between a hot, cold, and warm. I think that's pretty straightforward. We want to know what's the most cost effective, but also what's the most available. So a hot site is most available because why? Because we have the telecom ready. We have the equipment. We have replication in place. The most cost effective is a cold site, and a warm site is in the middle. Let's move on.